Five, four, three, two, one, bingo. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. How is everybody? Good. Really? Ava's not awake yet. Oh, where did Mia go? Oh, to go check on me, on, on Ava? Okay, hello everybody. It's August 25, 2020. Tuesday today. Who's celebrating a birthday today? I think it's uh, your cousins Annika and Huli, Julian. Oh, yeah, there are many more. Um, Kathy, Kathy Cruz, cousin Kathy Cruz, and Vincent, Vince Gamalinda, also celebrating their birthdays today. So happy birthday to all of you. Okay, so today is... What day is it today? Tuesday, August 25. Gospel for this morning's Mass is from St. Matthew, chapter 23, verses 23 to 26. <clears throat> so, Jesus said, There's some murmuring going on. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier things of the law. Judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these things you should have done without neglecting the others. Blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Very painful words, right? You blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup so that the outside also may be clean. Those of you who are washing the dishes as a chore, you know very well what this means, right? <laughs> uh, uh, when you only wash the externals, you only make the external of the dish or the cup look good, but inside uh, is still full of the uh, uh, refuse of the food. Well, huh? then it, 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 uh, it's ugly, right? It's filthy. So our Lord said, we cannot be like this. He criticizes and rebukes the Pharisees for being hypocrites because they only, they only exhibit externally a goody-goody side, right? They appear good before men. But really, deep down inside of them, they're rotten. They're like whitewashed tombs, the other description that our Lord used for them, right? They are like whitewashed tombs, that they're only nice on the outside. They look white and bright and nice, but inside, what's inside the tomb? Well, rotting flesh, dried bones, right? So... And, and uh, it's, even, it's even more, um, um, what's the right word to use? Appalling, maybe, to put it mildly, for the Pharisees because these people, um, who, they impose so much burdens on the Jews. They would impose a lot of uh, um, hair-splitting rules and regulations that people should follow, which they themselves are not doing, are not following, right? So they, to them is applied, uh, can, can be applied the saying, you know, do as I say, but don't do as I do. You know, you only follow what I tell you, don't follow my example. Well, that's hypocrisy, right? We tell other people to do something good, but we ourselves don't do the good that we say other people should be doing. Well, that's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy when we only 
try to exhibit a good image, but it is just a, an image. It is a mirage. It is a billboard that will show an external uh, 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 um, image of ourselves which is not consistent with the real state of our souls. So yesterday was the Feast of St. Bartholomew, right? And here we have a contrast. St. Bartholomew was praised by our Lord for being transparent, no duplicity in him. What you see is what you get. What you see on the outside is really a reflection of who he is inside. Whereas this Pharisees are the complete opposite. They may appear good to people externally, but inside of them is full of insincerity, is full of hypocrisy. They don't really believe in what they are expressing outside of them. They don't really subscribe to the so-called good things they impose on other people. They don't really believe in the way they are acting, in the way that they are projecting an image of faith. They don't really believe it. And you know, this is a common problem. This is a very, very common problem. And it is sad to note that this is a problem even with the clergy of the church. Plenty of our clergy, sad to say, you know, go about like, they're goody goody people. They go about going through the motions of saying mass, going through the motions of consecration and all that, but they really don't believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ. They really don't believe in the things that they preach. In fact, when they turn around from the altar, many of them don't live upright lives. So they are like these Pharisees who would go about their day showing their good side, showing like they, they abide by the commandments of God. And they say that other people should do the same. But really in their private lives, they're very different. They do what's opposite to what they preach. So our Lord is telling us we cannot live this way. We have to be consistent. In fact, our external behavior must be the consequence and the fruit of our interior dispositions. If we are sincere in our faith, in the things we believe in, these will actually show. This, this will actually... Uh, overflow, you know, into the way we act, into the way we behave, into the way we deal with other people. Of course, it's always a struggle. There is always a struggle because sometimes we're not consistent. Our behavior is not always consistent with what we believe in. That's why we have to keep struggling, fighting. The moment we put our guard down, and stop fighting to be consistent, then we slacken, we slide back, we go back to our old behaviors, we go back to our old practices. And that is why we always need to keep on struggling, keep up the fight, keep up the, 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 uh, the virtuous life that we try to live. That's what the virtues are there for, see? Because the virtues help us to stay the course. The virtues help us to behave properly according to what we believe in. Okay? That's what the virtues are there for. The virtues are the expressions of that faith. And they help us to stay along the path and not stray. Okay? So let's, let's remember the curse of our Lord here. Woe to you, Pharisees. That's a, you know, 
in the language of the scripture that is that is a very that's very strong language right so we will we will merit the same uh rebuke if we live our lives in a hypocritical way okay? so let's be more sincere both in our in our belief in God and the things that God has taught us to, to live by and in the way that we express this in our behavior. We better really incarnate these beliefs and make them part of ourselves so that we behave according to what we believe in. And well, there are a few things we can ask ourselves to help us go along this path. Number one is, first question you'd ask is, are we really, is our soul really free of sin, particularly mortal sin? Because mortal sin, unrepentant mortal sin that we allow to stay there in our souls and we don't confess it and we are ashamed of it but we don't admit to it and we are unrepentant of it that in itself is a seed of hypocrisy because no matter how we try to live a straight kind of life no matter how much we try to put on an image of being goody goody but if there is that obstacle in our soul by way of a mortal sin or mortal sins that we are unwilling to fully repent for then we're living a double life we are living a hypocritical kind of life and there's no way around it there is no way around it we, we will never be able to resolve our issues. We will never be able to overcome the obstacles that we're facing in life. We will never be able to change our lives if there is mortal sin in our soul. You see, change only comes when that obstacle of mortal sin in the soul is really taken out. That is a real big obstacle there. That's the roadblock. And unless you remove that roadblock through a good and sincere confession, you cannot go any further in life. You cannot change. And everything you do is just all external trimmings. It's just all appearances. Okay? It's all going to be just appearing goody-goody before others. Yeah, you may exhibit a good act here, a good act there. You may succeed in doing something good here, something good there. But you will see there's no consistency. There's no integrity. There is no wholesomeness in the way that this person behaves and conducts his life. Why? Because there is a big humongous obstacle that he is not getting rid of mortal sin in the soul until and unless you get rid of that mortal sin that is lurking in your soul there's no way you can progress in the path of good no way because you've got that big boulder along the path that's blocking your way towards God and towards heaven and towards behaving in the proper way expected of you as children of God. So we got to ask ourselves very sincerely, what is that obstacle? What is that mortal sin or mortal sins that we are keeping in our souls that we have not quite gotten rid of? Through a good, sincere, and repentant confession. What is that mortal sin? 
Now, what will move us to get rid of that obstacle of mortal sin in the soul? Well, one big part of that is, of course, the grace of God himself, who will give us the motivation, give us the grace to finally approach confession in a sincere and contrite way. Right? But there's another part. There's another thing which could help us get rid of that, and that is love for God. Do we, do we really sincerely love God? Because if there is real love for God, if we really do love God above all things, with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our strength, right? Just like the way the gospel was a week ago. And we will do everything in our power to show and express that love for God. Beginning with, well, getting rid of the obstacle uh, of mortal sin. If we love God enough, that should move us to seek repentance in confession. Now, the third question we need to ask ourselves is, are we really sincere in our efforts and desires to practice the virtues? Do we really want to, uh, to practice the virtues? Are we really sincere in this effort to live a good life through with the help of the virtues, not just a goody-goody life, not just a life of good appearances, but a real good life with the help of the virtues. Are we really sincere in doing that? Do we really want to do that? Or are we content with just appearing good and not really being good? So who are we fooling? Who are we trying to put on a show for? Eh? Who are we trying to impress with our goody-goody behavior? Well, not your parents, mind you, <laughs> and not God, right? Because your parents and God will not be impressed with just goody-goody behavior. But real good behavior, yes, born out of sincere uh, effort to live the virtues, yes, that one is impressive. And God will be impressed. God will be pleased with that effort. But if we are only pretending to be good, if we're only pretending to try to be good, that will not last. That's going to fizzle out as soon as the next uh, lazy effort, uh, laziness <laughs> uh, touches down on us. Uh, the goody-goody side of us will disappear. So we need to be sincere in our efforts to live good lives. So hypocrisy, right? hypocrisy, hypocrisy, it's very, very bad. Hypocrisy is very bad. Let's, let's, let's strive to be like St. Bartholomew yesterday and not like the Pharisees today. Let us sincerely examine ourselves and find out what are those obstacles, sinful things we have in our souls we need to get rid of, especially if we have big mortal sins that we need to confess? Number two, let's examine how much we really love God and really ask ourselves, do I really love God or am I just pretending that I do? And number three, let's look at how we practice the virtues. Are we really sincere in putting the effort to improve ourselves and our behaviors by putting into practice the virtues that we need to imbibe in our own character? These are the three things I recommend we look into to help us live with transparency, with simplicity, with sincerity, and not with hypocrisy. Okay, wake up now, we're done. <laughs> okay, folks, that's it for us today. Thank you for accompanying us this morning uh, uh, through this gospel commentary. 
we are now off to mass. We will, uh, we will, uh, and start our day, which is the way we normally start our day after breakfast, commentary, and then attend mass. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. We'll hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up now. <laughs>